So far we've assumed the tastes are complete. You can compare different types of bundles and they're transitive. There's a certain consistency to your taste that actually allows you to make choices. And we've said that those two assumptions are so fundamental to analyzing choice that we've actually called them axioms and together they define what it means for tastes to be rational. But to operationalize our model for tastes, we'll have to make a few more assumptions that typically hold in the kinds of economic settings that we analyze. The first of those is called monotonicity, which is just a fancy word of saying more is better. So what we mean by that is that if you're looking at different bundles of goods and you have a bundle B that has this much of X2 and this much of X1 and the bundle A that has more of everything, more of X1, more of X2, then it's going to be the case that you'll choose A over B, that you'll prefer A to B. So if the bundle A has more of everything, compared to B, then we're going to assume that A is preferred to B. We'll also assume that if this bundle A has more of some goods and no less of the other, it's at least as good as B. So if bundle A lies here, so that it has the same amount of x2, but more of x1, we're going to say that A is at least as good as B. Usually it's going to be better, but maybe x1 and x2 are goods that you have to consume together, so just getting more of x1 doesn't do anything for you. We'll refer to that later as perfect complements. In that case, you might actually be indifferent between A and B. But typically, you'd prefer A to B. So if A has more of some good, and no less of the other goods, and B, the monotonicity assumption will say that A must be at least as good as B. Why do we make that assumption? Well, economic choices are made in the world of scarcity where you have to make trade-offs. And so more is typically better, which is why we have to make trade-offs between things. Now, of course there are goods where less is better. Trash. We prefer to have less trash rather than more. But even in those cases, we can typically redefine the goods in a way such that the monotonicity assumption holds. So instead of defining the good as trash, we define the good as relative lack of trash. And so a greater relative lack of trash would be better than a smaller relative lack of trash. So typically we'll make the assumption that with the kinds of goods that we model, more is better in the way that we've defined here. The second assumption we're going to make deals with a little bit of a different scenario. So suppose that we have two bundles. Bundle A sits out here. And maybe on bundle A you have two units of x2 and 10 units of x1. And then suppose there's a bundle B up here where you have two units of x1 and maybe eight units of x2. The monotonicity assumption tells us nothing about how you might rank those bundles because it only applies to bundles where 
one bundle has more of everything or more of some things and no less of everything else. Here, bundle A has more of x1 but less of x2. Bundle B has more of x2, less of x1. So the monotonicity assumption doesn't tell us anything. But suppose that we knew that you were indifferent between A and B. Now you might say, how could you be indifferent between A and B? You have more units of stuff in A, because here you have 10 units of x1 and 2 of units, units of x2, whereas here you only have 8 of x2 and 2 of x1. How could you be indifferent between the two? Well, remember, these are different goods. It could be that you have a preference for x2. So it's actually just as good for you to have 8 of x2 and 2 of x1 as it is to have 10 of the thing you don't like as much um, and 2 of x2. So it's perfectly possible for you to be indifferent between these two. So if you're indifferent between these two, there's an assumption that we make that's called convexity. And a little bit later we'll talk about why it's called convexity. But it's just going to be a fancy way of saying that averages are better than extremes. And what we mean by that is that if we mix these two bundles together and then split them into two equal bundles, in other words, we've averaged the bundles, that average is going to be at least as good as the more extreme bundles. So if we mix the two and then divide them into two equal bundles, it would mean that each of the two equal bundles would have 8 plus 2 is 10 divided by 2 would have 5 of x2. That's the average between the two bundles. And for x1, we'd have 2 and 10. That's 12 divided by 2 would be 6. That's the average there. The average bundle would have 5 of x2, 6 of x1. Let's call that bundle C. The averages is better than the extremes assumption says that C should be at least as good as A and B. Why do we make that assumption? Well, in general, we typically have a preference for variety in what we consume. So when we offer the extreme bundles that we're indifferent between, we typically prefer an average of those two. That'll typically be true. And that's what the convexity assumption assumes. In fact, it assumes that any weighted average between these two bundles will be at least as good as the extreme bundles. So the average lies halfway between A and B. If we took a weighted average and we put more weight on uh, the bundle B, we'd be closer to B. If we put more, bundle, more weight on bundle A, we'd be closer to A, but we'd always be on that line that connects the two for any weighted average of the two bundles. So the convexity assumption says that um, if you're indifferent between A and B, then any weighted average of those two bundles is at least as good but usually we'll actually assume it's better so usually we'll assume that you prefer the average to the extremes rather than it being at least as good which allows for the possibility of you being indifferent. So the Montatissi assumption gives expression to the fact that we tend to want more of everything. The convexity assumption gives expression to the fact that we tend to have a taste for variety and therefore we like averages between things we're indifferent between better than extremes. Now it doesn't mean that if you aren't indifferent between A and B you like the average better. 
It's only if you're indifferent between those two that the convexity assumption applies and the average is better than the extremes. So these are two assumptions we're going to use a lot. There's a third assumption that I'll mention in passing and we'll only state it informally. And that third assumption is what's called the continuity assumption, or I'll sometimes call it the no sudden jumps assumption. And it basically just says that if we give you tiny increments more of stuff, you're not going to suddenly have a huge jump in how you feel about stuff. Tiny changes will cause tiny changes in how you feel about stuff, but not huge jumps. We could state that much more formally and much more mathematically, but we really have no need to. I'll mention it when we need it in the future.